Hey guys, welcome back to another Mansion 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a full damage system. So in this, we're going to be damaging the player with differing amounts depending on the height they fell off from. So let me show you what this is going to look like now. So if we get in, we have these stairs. So if I go up here, let's go to about this height and I jump off, you can see that we took 40 health taken off. So we've gone from 100 down to 60. If I go even further up, we're going to take more damage off. So this height should kill us. Now obviously you can customize it so that you see we're dead and like I said you can customize this to have different values so you have to be at different heights, different damage, all that stuff. I've put them relatively low just for the purpose of the tutorial so I can easily show you but yeah this is what we're going to be doing so it's height like this will be nothing, go a little bit further up it should be about 10 like so, go further up it'll be 40 and then just kill us so this is quite good so I'm going to be showing you how to do this today. So let me delete the code and I'll show you how I've done this. So in this video I'm also going to be using a health and damage system which I set up previously so I'd recommend watching that as well. It's not necessary, you can watch this first but for the actual damaging part you will need to watch that but you can again watch this before doing that. The way I'm doing it you do need that video but you don't need to do it first. But again I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. The first step we want to take is to open up our character blueprint as that is where we want to do this code. So for me that's content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character, but for you this could be third, first, or whatever you've named it. Once we're in here we want to find some empty space so I'll go down here and we're going to right click and we're going to get event on movement mode changed. So every time the movement mode changes this event will fire off. So off of this we're going to come out the new movement mode, we're going to get an equal equal enum and in this we want to just change it from non to falling. So when the player starts falling it's going to do this code. So to check this we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, plug in the condition in there and the executable into there like so. Obviously we only want to do this off of true as we only want to do the full damage when the player is falling. So then we also want to be getting the player's speed as that is how we're going to be doing this. We're going to be increasing the damage dealt based on the player's speed. So to do that we're going to right click and get velocity like so and then we're going to right click this and split the structure pin and then we're going to right click again and make vector like so. Plugging the Z from the get velocity into the Z of the make vector and the reason we're doing that is because we only want to get the player's speed on the Z so as they're falling down so if they're going like diagonal it's not going to take their speed going forward as well as down only the speed going down as that is how full damage is usually done in games so once you've done that we're going to come out the return value of the make vector I'm going to get a vector length which is just going to tell us the float value of this velocity so it's going to get the velocity of this. Now you might be wondering why we're not just going straight out of the return value here and instead we're making a vector and getting the length and that's just purely because I don't want this to be a minus so in here it'll be a minus as we're falling down which obviously you can do as well but I'm just thinking for especially for beginners keeping it in positive numbers will make it a lot easier and this is just a good way of doing it as well and you don't have to this is just good as well. It, the efficiency doesn't change either way, so there's no real need to do either one. So we're doing it this way today. So then we want to do with this vector length is we want to be checking to see how fast this is, so how big of a number this is. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get a greater than or equal to float. So a float is greater than or equal to a float. This first one I'm going to put as 650. So I'm basically just seeing if the player is going to be falling fast enough. So this is going to go into another branch. So I'm going to hold on B and left click to get a condition in there. Plugging this into the true of this first branch as again I only want to do it if we're falling. Then the true of this I'm going to come out and I'm going to get another branch. So hold on B left click to get another branch from the true of that one. And this is going to be another check. So I'm going to get another greater than or equal to. So actually let's just right click greater than or equal to. Again being a float with the top value being the vector length of our velocity. Boolean in there. And then the bottom value for this one I'm going to put is 800. And now again, you can customize this to be whatever you like, the amount of values you want, so how fast, how slow, but these are the ones which I found earlier to be kind of good, but again, you might want to increase these. Off of false of this, so on this one, we're going to actually be damaging the player. This one, we don't want to damage the player, but this one, we do. And the reason we're not on the first one is because otherwise, every time the player jumps, they'll take damage, which obviously we don't want. We want it to be if they're going this fast. So off of false of this branch here, we're going to set our damage variable, which we have in our damage tutorial that we made. Again, if you haven't done that yet, let's create an integer called damage and set it here. So I'm going to set that off of false. And on this first one, I want the player to take 10 damage. Now again, this can be whatever you like. This can be 1, 5, 10, 15, absolutely anything you like. So I'm going to set that to be 10 there. And then I'm going to get another branch. So hold down B, left click. This branch is again going to be going off the true of that branch there. So if it then does get greater than this, we're going to check again. 
So the reason we're doing that is if it's at this speed, it's going to be 10 damage, but if it then gets faster than this speed afterwards, it's going to check again. So it's going to increase the damage. So again, vector length greater than or equal to, that going to the condition there. And the value of this one, I'm going to set as 900. Then again, false, I'm going to set the damage. This time, I'm going to set it to be 40. Then hold down B, left click to get another branch. It's very repetitive. We're just checking different speeds to see how fast the player is going. And this will be the final one that I'll do. You can do as many checks as you like. So in here, again, vector length greater than or equal to, plugging a condition in there. This one I'm going to have as 1,000. Off of true, this time I'm going to set the damage to be 100, so it just instantly kills the player. Again, you can go as fast as you want, but this is where I want it. And off of false, I'm also going to set the damage. I'm going to set this one to 70. So essentially, if it is between 900 and 1,000, it's going to do 70 damage, but then if it goes above 1,000, it will do 100 damage. So let me run you through what we've done so far, is when we go into the falling movement mode, it's going to get our speed. If it's less than 650, we won't do any damage. If it's between 650 and 800, it will do 10 damage. If it's between 800 and 900, it will do 40 damage. If it's between 900 and 1000, it will do 70. And if it's above 1000, it will do 100 damage, so just kill the player. So again, customize this completely how you want. After we've set the damage, so once we've done this part, we actually want to deal the damage to the player as well. But we want to do that after the player's landed. So we're not just going to do it straight away, we'll do it after it's landed. However, there is also one thing we want to do before that as well. So you might notice that with this current setup, it's only going to do this once. So it's only going to check once, which is immediately when the player starts falling. So it will always be false off of this here. So what we want to do is we want to then continually check this until the player lands. So that's very easy to do. So what we're going to do is up here, we're going to right click and add a custom event. And I'm just going to name this check speed like so. Out of this, I'm going to hold down B, left click to get a branch. The condition of this is going to be if the player is falling. So to get that, we can just drag and drop a reference to a character movement in here like so. Drag out of this and get is falling. Plugging the return value into the condition there. And we're doing this because we only want to be checking the speed if the player is still falling. And then if the player isn't falling, that's when we're going to apply the damage. So off of true of this, so if the player is still falling, we're going to go back into this branch here for the first one of checking the speed. So this means when we call this function or when we call this event, it's going to still be checking the speed again. So then we want to call this event after we set the damage on all of these. So we're going to continually check the speed of the player. And so doing that is very simple. So what we're going to do is at the very end of the code here, just in kind of in the middle, we're going to hold down D left click to get a delay. And in this delay, I'm going to set it as a very, very small value of 0.001. And I'm just doing that so this doesn't become an infinite loop. It has time for this code to finish before calling it again. The completed of this delay, I'm going to call function check speed like so. And then we need to connect this up. So we're going to basically come out of all of these here. So the bottom set damage go into the delay. All of these set damages will go in the delay like so. And then we also want the fault of this first branch as well. So basically, every time it's checking the speed, it's going to then continually check the speed again. So it's going to constantly keep the code updated with how much damage it should do, as it's going to be constantly checking how fast the player is moving. So then if we go back up to our event here of check speed, off of false, so if it then checks the speed again, so not only is it checking the speed, sorry, but it's also checking to see if the player is falling. So back up here, if when we check the speed, if the player stops falling, so they've landed, we then want to deal this damage. So all I'm going to do for that is just call my function of decrease health there off of false, like so, which again, this is the one which we made in the previous tutorial. If I go in here, it's literally just going to get the player's health and minus damage off of that and set that to be their new health. And I have a sound effect and all that good stuff as well. So this is the code done. So I'll run you through it again. What it's going to do is when the player starts falling, we're going to just be checking their speed and depending on their speed, we're going to be setting a certain damage and it's going to continually check the player's speed and if they're falling. So when they stop falling, we're then going to decrease the health. And again, this will constantly update, so if they start going faster, the damage will increase. And if they start going slower, it will lower as well, but I'm not sure how you would start going slower, but the function would still work. Then actually, I want to do something else here as well, so I'm going to make this a little bit better, so I'm a bit more efficient. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this decrease health function out a little bit, and disconnect it, and I want to check something before. So I'm going to hold down B, left click, to get a branch, plugging that into false there. The condition of this, I'm going to get my health variable here, 
So get health. Now of this, I'm going to get a not equal to. So you can just do an exclamation mark and an equals for not equal to. I'm going to plug the condition of that into the branch there. And I can leave that as zero. So sorry, that's not health, that's damage. So I'm going to get damage, plug that in there. So basically, if the damage isn't zero, so we want to damage the player, we're going to do this. So we're going to come out of true and go into there. So if the damage isn't zero, we're going to decrease the health because otherwise every time the player jumps, it will call this function. Now it won't actually damage the player because the damage is zero, but it will play the sound effect and everything else that you have. So we don't want that. So that will fix that issue. And then after this, I'm also going to hold down D, left click to get a delay, plugging that in there with the duration of this is just 0.1. And then I'm going to reset the damage back to zero. So you can just set damage as zero there. So that means the next time they jump, it won't just do the amount of damage that we had set previously. So now this should work perfectly. So we have all of this code set up, which again, I've just ran through with you. I'll go through this last part again. So when we want to deal the damage or when the player stops falling, it's gonna see if we want to damage the player. If we do, it will damage the player and then reset the damage back to zero for the next time we jump. So if we compile and save that, we can then test this out. So I minimize this, hit play to test it. I'm gonna go up these stairs here. If I jump off of here, that should take 10 damage off. So our health is 90. If I go again, go a little bit further up from here it's going to take 70 health off so we're now down to 30 so a little bit higher than that should kill us but if i go a little bit lower we should get to 40 so it takes 60 health off like that sorry it's the other way around it takes 40 off to get us to 60 and if i go all the way up here it should kill the player and we can see like that the player is dead and again this is completely customizable for you so you can make it so the player has to fall further and you just do that by increasing the speed you can increase or lower the damage, completely customizable for you and how you want to have it. So I think that'll be it for this video, is we've done everything we've wanted to do. We've set up this full damage system, which is very easily customizable for you to get it perfect for how you want. And we implemented this using our damaging the player's health, which I made in the previous tutorial, using that dynamic function. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.